Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, it's funny, I've noticed uh, that if you basically talk about something twice in a week, then you get comments where you're like, oh, so this is a blank reaction channel now? So the funny thing is, I already was going to do a video on Tim Seeley today, and then something else happened, so now I'm doing a different video on Tim Seeley. But yes, this is now a Tim Seeley reaction channel. <laughs> anyway, the video I was going to do, I basically covered it in a uh, uh, community post yesterday. I was talking about Donny Cates. And I was like, for a guy who was so popular for several years and recently, it's weird that he isn't missed. Like Warren Ellis is missed, but uh, uh, Donny Cates uh, basically destroyed all of his connections in the industry because he's got a drug problem and um, nobody misses him it's like he was he was like for a while it was what like it was like Scott Snyder and Donny Cates right I'm not misremembering that he was very 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 popular and then when he was blacklisted everyone was just kind of fine with it like so uh, some people in the comments they were basically saying his advantage was that he was slightly better than average at a time when the average was below average. So he kind of looked like a genius by comparison. I remember when everyone loved him so much and I would read his stuff and I would be like, if this was the 90s, he would be writing like backup stories in annuals. Like he wasn't bad, but he wasn't, to me, he wasn't someone that would be like, you know, a really hot writer. He was just kind of like a whatever writer. Um, but anyway, the other thing uh, I noticed is I got all excited about they're doing a, a Rogue Savage Land and they've got some really great uh, covers, specifically this one by Kari Andrews. I was hoping he was the interior artist as well. Uh, he isn't. It's uh, Zulema Lavina. I've never heard of her, but I looked up her stuff and she's a good artist. Um, and she draws women quite well. So I was like, all right, cool. And then I saw the writer and it was Tim Seeley. I was like, because <sighs> Tim Seeley is just like, Tim Seeley is like not not Tim Seeley, if you know what I mean. Like if he writes something or if he doesn't write it, nobody notices or cares. He's like tofu or something like that. He's just kind of there. So my video was going to be like do writers even matter anymore because you know back in the day uh, you had the image revolution so the thing that really mattered was the artist and then all the artists left at once and I keep making myself laugh imagining an alternate reality uh, where uh, Jim Valentino like pretended he was gonna leave with them and then just stayed and then he's like no nah, I'm gonna stay and they just handed him like every X-Men book the entire franchise <laughs> which people kind of forget like he wasn't hugely popular but he was fairly popular uh, when he was on Guardians of the Galaxy um, but uh, but anyway um, so then Marvel but also kind of the Marvel specifically they got so burned by artists that they were like we're never gonna rely on artists or let them become powerful again and you would see them kind of like step on artists step on quote unquote where like a Steve a Steve McNiven would be getting really popular, <coughs> which means his page rate would be going up, and all of a sudden they would just lose interest. He would get some covers here and there, but uh, they they very consciously never wanted a uh, an artist to become powerful again. But they did give a lot of uh, power to writers, and now it seems we're in this kind of uh, post artist post writer again just I mean it was basically the, like the, the just as my channel was starting that's when Donny Cates started going from indies to mainstream uh, mainly at Marvel and he was doing really really great and it's just so weird like nobody like if something is good and then it's gone you miss it if it's gone and you don't miss it you understand what I'm saying like Chick-fil-a they used to have this fudge brownie that had like this serrated frosting and uh, walnuts 
in this little plastic tub. I can, it's, it's been, I think they discontinued it like, I don't know, like a decade ago. I remember I was traveling and I stopped at a Chick-fil-A and I ordered it and they said, oh, we don't have it. And like, I, I was kind of coping. I was like, oh yeah, just like this one, they ran out. But then I slowly found out that they just discontinued it for no reason. Um, but oh my God, that was the best. But you understand what I'm saying. If something is good and then it's gone, you miss it. If something is supposedly good and it's gone and you don't miss it, like nobody basically cares. Donny Cates has only really made the news in the last year because number one, he emerged from his drug stupor to join in on the digital lynch mob against that retailer Glenn very stupidly because the only other people who joined in on it were Gail Simone and Jamal Eigel. So then after like that didn't work out for him, he kind of disappeared again. And then it was just announced that Null, uh, a character he co-created, is in the third and possibly last Venom movie. Um, so he's been very happy about that. But like, so anyway, um, that was, that's kind of a different video. <laughs> now we will talk about the actual video, which is uh, Tim Lee, uh, Tim Lee, Tim Seeley um, is getting attacked um, very strangely. So I guess uh, context is important. So I think I'm kind of required to read this entire article. Tim Seeley responds to Rogue and Magneto X-Men concerns. Um, so uh, blah, blah, blah. Rogue debuted as a member of Mystique's Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. So a bunch of they thems uh, had uh, some problems uh, with this. And they <coughs> so it looks like Tim deleted uh, most of these tweets, but the quotes are still available. So uh, a they them said, thank you X-Men 97 for resuscitating and bringing to the spotlight one of the most disgusting and vile pairings to ever grace a comic book page? Sorry, bub. Why do they always talk like this? I'll be avoiding your stuff from now on. These are all people tweeting to Tim Seeley uh, because he's writing this. This ship needs to be removed from canon forever. I'm praying this sells like shit. So Tim says, like, it's not related to the show, so I'm not sure about this reaction. It's Rogue in the Savage Land. Cool. So uh, this issue is actually going to be covered in Comic Book the Comic Book. I have it right here. So I need to reread it and then add uh, what I'm going to put for the captions and dialogue. You can see I've done that for uh, these two. But um, from what I remember, it was kind of vague. It was implied that something happened, but they didn't get very specific about it. In the animation, it was, you know, it was a rekindled relationship and then they just showed all of the rekindling. Um, but in the comics, it was more vague. And also when this was announced a couple days ago, where is it? Rich was like very salty. He was like, Marvel goes full fan service with Rogue Savage Land comic. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rich. Uh, the industry is in full collapse, so they need to make some money. And who do they go to? When they need money, middle-aged men, as I call them divorce dentists. So you're middle-aged, you grew up with these characters, you still love them despite everything that's happened and all of the constant attacks um, uh, and just insults. I mean, they were actively trying to draw, drive us away while drawing in a phantom audience of they thems. Now the they thems are there to cause problems when a what looks to be a very popular <coughs> project is about to happen even though it is written by Tim Seeley but you got a, a beloved era uh, in the comics you got um, somebody in the comments on my uh, I think it was a community post they said uh, I think Rogue ripped her costume on purpose <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious um, the implication of, is, of course, just living in the Savage Land just ripped her costume to shreds. But I just love the idea where she's just using that as an excuse. Um, <laughs> that's hilarious to me. Um, but uh, anyway, um, so uh, there's been variations on their romance. In the original Savage Land comic, 
it's there's something happening there but they don't really make it clear what's happening and then in age of apocalypse the uh, comic book storyline uh, they were married and had a son um, and then uh, but and then in the animation they had just a relationship so uh, the they thems are really really angry uh, about this going on is it a reprint retell of Savage Land comic I honestly don't know if it is then yes that's the issue with it people have shunned it for decades and it's been in the void forever until the show brought up the pair same has happened with AOA which I remember similar reactions so Tim says okay gotcha I was unaware this story doesn't deal with romance really but good to know I guess <laughs> very passive aggressive by the way I looked up his uh, the way he describes himself and it's um he says so he's seeing that he's getting some negative attention so he's using it to sell his books if you're just coming by with either excitement or hate for rogue the savage land please consider buying these other comics I made that you're invited to have strong opinions of and then he describes himself as he says just who is Tim Seeley I'm a feminist pro-sex creator with a big affection for stories deemed b-movie exploitive trashy by American society and that's reflected in all my work please check out these books I wrote it's very consistent um, so getting back to the article um, so uh, another they them says just keep rogue as far away as possible from Magneto we appreciate a lot this ship will forever be creppy rogue was a teenager that's not true and Magneto was old enough to be her grandfather um, this was the late 80s Magneto would have been born in the probably 20s so yeah he was he was he yeah he was uh, there's one person says specifically that uh, Rogue was 18 in that story. I went and checked some things and they're just making that up. She was vaguely in her early 20s. So old enough to be grandfather, possibly, um, but not. So <laughs> uh, uh, then the person says, I remember on the playgrounds, all the kids would be like you with the Magneto part, LOL. It's definitely something, LOL. Tim Seeley says, personally, I don't have strong feelings about a marriage between them. I'm not writing that here. They do have interactions, and readers can decide what to do with that once they read it. Uh, another they, them. Marvel are out of their mind for pushing the Rogue and Magneto pairing. What a travesty, he just replies, huh? Uh, another they, them. It's more of a reaction to the comic itself than the art. Oh, so uh, Rich was getting angry that rogue was showing some skin and this was appealing to the male gaze because of course only men appreciate attractive women wait aren't you <laughs> there's been so much obsession with appealing to gay audience so you're saying that lesbians don't like this and even gay men don't find like the it very kitschy okay okay it's it's very it so the problem is well it's twofold um ro uh, rogue 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 Johnson. Rich Johnson gets really salty when he has to do a story at the same time as everyone else. For instance, Scott Snyder uh, gave previews of Absolute Batman, which when that comes out, go to the store, buy copies. That is, I'm not really into the whole, uh, uh, what is it called, back issue, uh, obviously selling comics, but this thing is going to be freaking huge. Just Go buy it, and then you get to sell it for at least double what you pay, probably triple what you pay to all the people who are like, Batman's symbol looks like a brick. Mm. But anyway, um, so Rich gets really salty when he gets the information the same day as everyone else. So he was all bothered. Um, uh, what does he say? Um, uh because it seems that in January 2025, in the post-Christmas winter months, Marvel is looking to heat things up a bit. Uh, with Italian artist Zulema Lavina making her Marvel Comics debut and providing Marvel with cover when people say that this is just sexist exploitation. Again, it's fun, Rich. It, it's fun. It's, it's comics. It's fun. <laughs> just go away. <laughs> like, just... 
just a person who has never contributed anything but problems. And there's a whole bunch of people like that. Rich Johnston, uh, Heather Antos. Oh, by the way, I saw a video from Wes. I got to find some article. Apparently, IDW has capped the budget per page for their comics at $200. I have thoughts about this. Uh, but anyway, going on with the they thems. Um, uh, frowned upon comic that was essentially lost to the void. Okay, this is a weird thing. So SJWs don't always do this, but they're doing it now where they will claim that their own feelings are like the universal reaction. Um, this is a beloved era. The look with the ripped up Savage Land clothing, it's iconic. And now they're like, oh, everyone forgot about this. Obviously they didn't. Um, uh, so a bunch of people just thinking it's related to the show. Um, uh, sorry. A lot of people saying Rogue is a teenager, even though she wasn't. She was very clearly uh, early um, 20s. And so finally at the end, uh, Tim says, powerful opinions on the Rogue Magneto relationship. Personally, when I read those comics back in 1989, age 13, I disliked the romance because I wanted Rogue to be my girlfriend one day. Anyway, January 25. If you're just coming by with either excitement or hate for Rogue the Savage Land, please consider buying these other comics I made that you're invited to have strong opinions on. Um, so anyway, um, the only real issue with this is just Tim Seeley. Not that he's bad, but that he's very bland. And so, um, uh, but this is going to be very successful. Um, <laughs> I always think it's funny when, like, it has to be explained to another human being on a planet of 8 billion human beings that, like, physical attraction is important and it's uh, people like it. I was talking to a friend and I was talking about uh, Eternals. And I was like, oh, I just finished Eternals. They're like, oh, uh, I didn't like that movie. I was like, yeah, it was pretty slow, but the lead actress was really beautiful. So that kind of kept me watching. I also like the uh, like the gold filigree on their, uh, their outfits and even in their powers. Um, but like just me saying like, I watched a movie that was just barely okay because the lead actress was beautiful. Like that was just insane to him. Like what? What? But yeah, this is how this is how you get eight billion people on Earth, and that people look at other people and they go, "Oh, I like, I like uh, the cut of her jib." Like, <laughs> and then we have to have this weird insanity where this is like pushed down for like half a decade, and we just get fat lesbians writing awful books. There's a there's some contention about what to call this modern age of comics, and I'm fine with calling what about 2017 to I would say 2022 I would call that the gay age maybe even to be like 2023 I mean there was an absolute obsession and even with DC it's still going on just like like people will send me messages like who is this person they're working at DC I've never heard of them they've got four books out of nowhere they got four books and I'm like I know that person is gay because that's just how it works Marvel's getting away from that. They're like, oh shit, we need money. Who are those people we hated? Our fans. And what age are, are our fans? Oh, they're like 50 now. So 50 is this age where it's, it's typically like you are making the most money. If you have a career, this right here is like you have the most revenue per year. So these... Uh, you know, they raise the price of a comic a dollar. It doesn't affect the divorce dentist. So this one, I mean, look, all of these covers are fun. Um, that's all great stuff. So, and like I said, I checked on the interior artists. A lot of times they go really cheap with the interior artists, especially IDW apparently. Um, but she's good. The only real weak point of this uh, book is the writer himself. And like I said, with the with the um, Donny Cates thing, I don't think writers really matter anymore. I think it's more about like cover art, a bunch of variants, divorce dentists will buy them all up. 
a character everyone likes, an era that is fondly remembered be- despite what a bunch of they them say, and uh, like a, just an iconic, iconic look. Uh, <laughs> but I just love the idea that crashing in the Savage Land and living there had nothing to do. I love the idea that Rogue is just like, I'm going to show some skin. Uh, <laughs> that is that is hilarious. Uh, that, that would be a great scene in here where her, her costume is just fine. And then like she hears some people approaching. She just rips the hell out of it. <laughs> Thank you. you. You made my entire uh, day, whoever made that comment. Uh, so anyway, before I go, comic book the comic book, which will cover this... I believe I've got it down here somewhere. It's around here. There it is. See? I didn't just add this at the last moment. It was there. Um, this is a beloved, only a they, them with autism and many other mental issues would have any kind of problem with this. I mean, this is this is comics right here. You got the guns. You got the babes. You got the uh, the muscles. You got the the gear. Just, just everything. She's got a knife. Where'd she get the knife? Where'd you get the knife, Rogue? You don't usually have one. Maybe, probably Kazar gave it to her. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.